You're probably not gonna consume these leaves for fun. They are extremely peppery, but if you were to take them for medicinal use, you would find that they are very effective. How's it guys? I'm Gus, the African plant hunter. This is the next in my ongoing series on medicinal plants of Southern Africa. And our subject today is Warburgia salitaris, uh, the pepper bark tree known around here as Moranga. This is a very, very highly valued medicinal plant in many parts of uh, southern East Africa. Mostly found in the wetter areas, it's a sort of a medium-sized tree with these uh, beautiful dark green and very peppery flavored leaves. In Zimbabwe today, there are almost none left in the wild because they've been harvested to extinction by traditional healers. And the reason for that is that the main part that they're looking for is the bark. And it's when the bark is harvested, of course, it's terribly easy to unfortunately kill the tree. In fact, many of the medicinal compounds in this plant are also found in the leaves. And there is a huge opportunity for small scale farmers to grow this as a medicinal plant, uh, which I think would be highly profitable. I'm not aware of anyone that's currently doing that, but it does seem to me like that would be an opportunity in the future. So, Canalaceae, this family in which uh, this tree belongs, uh, is perhaps most well known for a plant called uh, Canella winterana, which is white cinnamon, which is an aromatic plant that's used as a condiment, also used as a tonic. Now, the mode of application for this. Well, as I said, it's the bark. It's most often taken uh, as a decoction consumed internally for a number of different ailments and often just as a general tonic, as a kind of panacea cure to, to all kinds of medical problems. Specifically, it's used to treat thrush, uh, both oral thrush and vaginal thrush. It's used for chest ailments, coughs, colds, flus. Uh, it's also the bark is dried in powdered and taken as a snuff to clear your sinuses. Uh, decoction of the bark and the leaves is used as an expectorant to uh, encourage you to bring up um, phlegm from your lungs. Also used as an anti-malarial, anti-tuberculosis. And perhaps most interestingly in my local context in Zimbabwe are the magical properties of this. So healers in order to heal they need to be able to see seeing that's a word and essentially it's accessing the spiritual dimension in zimbabwe traditional healers use a tool to help them do that which are these divining bones called hakata and when a healer gets a new set of hakata they need to infuse them in a liquid solution uh, a sort of magical liquid solution to help them to see as a result of using these uh, Hakata. And one of the main ingredients in that is this Warburgia, uh, a solution made from the leaves mixed with a few other medicinal plants, notably Chifumuro, Dicoma anomala, which is another plant that I'll be talking about, another very famous plant in Zimbabwe uh, for its medicinal uses. Those together in combination will ensure that those Hakata are able to see and that the healer can therefore access the spirit world and help to cure you. Pharmacologically, there is significant uh, reason to believe that this tree does have uh, pharmaceutically active compounds in it, particular class of compounds called drymane sesquiterpenoids that may be responsible for its apparent anti-malarial and other uh, pharmaceutical activities. Uh, the other compound in it that's very interesting is mannitol. Mannitol is used as a uh, natural non-nutritive sweetener, um, but also very active in terms of um, reducing swelling in the eyes, glaucoma, uh, and also intracranial swelling as a result of a head injury. Um, and mannitol, it's got a lot of other uses as well. Uh, cystic fibrosis um, in Europe, mannitol is approved for use treating cystic fibrosis, uh, etc. I won't go into all of them because there are a lot. 
But that is this fascinating, fascinating plant. I was involved 20 years ago in an initiative to um, bring seedlings into Zimbabwe from South Africa, where they had been grown in a, a herbarium there at the National Botanical Gardens in Pretoria, and to replant them here with uh, traditional healers. And very uh, entertainingly, we gave them out to, to healers, uh, small seedlings. And then when we came back two or three years later to ask to see those, they refused to show us where they were because they so jealously guarding and protecting these trees and they didn't want anyone else to know where they were. So that's how highly valued they are by healers in Zimbabwe. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. Plenty more on my YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and even LinkedIn channels. Just check out African Plant Hunter. Hit subscribe. You'll hear all the, see all the latest videos when they come out. And if you'd like to support me, I'd really appreciate that. Uh, that would enable me to make more videos. You can go to my Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash African Plant Hunter. Hope you enjoyed it. I'm off to make another video about medicinal plants. I will catch you later. Take it easy. Bye.